Welcome back to an FNA, and today I want to talk about how loving the process of animation has helped me continue to animate in this industry for almost 20 years. Now, how did I get to this topic? So it's kind of a roundabout way, and if you're one of my students, you know I go off on tangents and talk about a bunch of stuff. So how did I get there? Well, I was listening to the Animation Happy Hour, which is awesome. I have a recommendation clip. Definitely check it out. It's a great podcast. In one of those episodes, there had a Q&A, and they talked about a bunch of different things. And one of the topics that came up was the industry and how difficult it can be. And generally, if you love the process of animating, going through the defining of ideas, the shooting of reference, finding reference, acting things out, blocking things out, going into the whole native gritty of animating into the final polished process, if you love that, it will help you go through this long journey of being an animator. That being said, this is a something that I apply for a general say a remedy, but something that I do for like the, your day-to-day -day trials and tribulations of being an animator. And that does not cover extreme cases that constantly come up in the news, which are a reminder that this industry is facing a lot of really tough problems and just loving the process of animating is not gonna help that. I'm talking about your daily struggles with motivation, potentially software problems, client notes. Most cases you do an animation for someone and especially revisions, either for yourself or for someone. You're always gonna do something some iteration, some update for someone, either for yourself or a client or a supervisor, a leader, whoever is around you, if you do something for someone. And that's what I mean when I talk about loving the process. It covers that aspect, which is something you will face every day for weeks, months, and years. So you still have to find something to go through your daily life, even if everything's okay. You don't go through those extreme cases where you have either mental abuse, physical abuse, financial abuse. Again, each industry has some really tough aspects of it. But even if that is not there, you're still gonna face a daily struggle to continue every day to perform at a really high level. Because the thing is, and again, this whole topic thing, this whole remedy, whatever, is for me personally. Whatever it works for you, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm very curious what you have as a motivation or as a trick or something so that you can continue every day. But for me is I have an idea for a shop. And it's not at work because at work you get a lot of input and feedback and turnovers that you know what to do to some degree. But if I do something at home, I have that initial idea. It's that initial, oh, this is cool. This is really exciting. I want to do this. And as I continue to work, that excitement flattens. It just goes, eh, is that really a good idea? And then you start getting into revisions and fixes and technical problems. Like, do I really want to do all this? And that's what I'm talking about for myself. So as you continue, even if it's something that's at home, it almost starts to feel like a job. Like you have initial excitement and then you go like, okay, well, this is something you have to work on every day and chip away. And how do you continue doing this without losing your, your motivation? And for me, it is the process of animating. And just as a caveat, I don't know how I can make you fall in love with animation. Again, this is why this is such a subjective upload. I do, and it started way back. I can blend in somewhere. Um, one of my first assignments was getting out of a chair assignment. I've done stuff before. There was a Maya one where you model the character, you rigged it, and you tried to animate. There was no animation lecture or an explanation of animation principles. So it's just kind of doing something. I had no idea what I was doing, and it was horrible. The second class, I didn't even have the example saved up anymore. It was just going through something. Again, it was rigging and texturing a lot. Like nothing worked. Then I had my actual actual animation class. This was in fall 2002. So it's very close to 20 years now. And that's for me like the first time where I thought, oh, this is how you animate. I had a great teacher, Lisa Mullins. She explained the principles of animation. She had examples. She acted things out. Like that was the class that really showed this is what you got to do. These are the expectations. This is the amount of work that you have to do. And we did the bouncing ball and we did a flower sack pantomime type of thing. But I remember the getting out of the chair clip being the clip that made me fall in love with with, with the with everything, the whole aspect, because we just have to do getting out of the chair, but me being an idiot and not knowing how much time it takes and the amount of work that is, you know, falling onto this assignment, I had no idea. I had the character and I, I modeled the chair. I, I say model, it's basically like spheres and cubes and stuff, but I rigged it so that this, the, the chair could rotate, could fold, could do a bunch of stuff. And there was a book that yeah, at least you can open close. It's a bunch of stuff that I rigged up and I just loved setting up set pieces, except the camera, but everything around that assignment, I wanted to animate and manipulate and do something with it. And the assignment was insane. It was way too long. I got a bunch of notes. It was great. But it was a really good learning experience to go through. And for some reason, that has always stuck with me. I did this super weird clip that I even didn't put on my demo reel. But it's the same thing where I added stuff to the to the characters, but I added props and added little extra. Like there's a fly, fly, I added some sound effects and I did a bunch of stuff to it. And also the reason why I'm doing all this clip here, and not just because of that clip in the animation podcast, it was 
because I started animating at home again and I want to do like my own little challenge of animating something once a month. Will never happen. Maybe once every two months. But I don't know. Like each clip, I want to do something that I haven't done before. Like right now, it was heavy on renders. And now the next one is going to be a different kind of render. I want to do something with cloth. I want to do something with water and simulations, uh, different techniques like animating on two. So I haven't done that. Or doing everything in stepped at the beginning. I've really done that for such a long time, actually since school. So this is something else I want to do. But as I started and actually finished the clip with the kid, like the little Jedi kid, again, I went way off track and started animating not just the camera, but the camera was a different tool that I want to talk about later, but a bunch of set pieces that are all hand animated as things break apart and roll around. And I have just as much fun animating that as the character. Like, to me, these are the same things. I love this. I loved animating everything in this shot. And this is kind of like the roundabout thing of when I did that getting out of the chair shot, I feel like none of it has changed from way back to now. I love animating everything within a scene. This could be a prop, a vehicle, the camera, characters, like, you know, human creatures. I just like the process of setting keys and seeing how your character comes alive or not and going into those revisions and making it work, kind of sculpting away at the shot until it hopefully works. And the reason why all of this has helped me is like at work, you might face a situation where you have to do a lot of revisions. And this is probably like one of the main things why I'm mentioning all this, because revisions are the, the land or the area where your dreams die. <laughs> <laughs> this is so not true. Well, like it's, it chips away at your motivation. When you have to redo the shot over and over and over, and sometimes there are bigger changes, and sometimes they're just really small incremental changes where you stop seeing what the change really is. And after 40, 50 versions, you go back to version 17, and you go, oh, okay, they're like this one now. And then you start iterating on that version. So you have to find a way to be able to do all those revisions while still putting in 110% of the work and a quality of it so that you can convince whoever needs to see this that this is going to be awesome and it kind of fulfills their vision right because you're at work or whenever you work for someone you're doing something for that person you, you're working on someone else's demo reel and you're you know you're trying to fulfill someone else's vision right but for me and this is not something that i had from the very beginning but it is a struggle when you think this is the best thing i've ever done and then you get notes and it turns into the worst thing you've ever done and then you got to do the revisions so there was there was a switch at one point where even though i loved the process of animation or Already. There's still the frustration of redoing things over and over. And at one point, it was just a switch. And it was mostly after the experience on Battleship where I was animating something for like six months and like 80% of that work was thrown out. And uh, a conversation with uh, an Adam Soup who just mentioned like, that's the job. Like he said it in different ways, but the gist of it is that's your job. You're doing this, doesn't matter how. Yes, it could be more efficient, but again, that is part of the job. You got to deal with this and still produce really good work for someone else. In this case, it was for a client. And for me, after that moment, the switch was that if I have to do something 50 times, that means that that's 50 opportunities to make it better, 50 opportunities to find a better idea in terms of workflow, how to get to that idea faster and better, and also just practice. If at the end, I don't like the shot, like the climb, I like it, I don't like it, doesn't matter. I've done this so many times, even the minimum positive effect of all this was that I'm now a better animator in terms of speed. Because I've done this so many times now, this is like muscle memory, like grooves in your brain where like, I've done this move now. So the next time I have to do this move again for a different shot, I know how to do this. I've done this a bunch of times. So revisions and doing things over, yes, can be frustrating and it can be really tough to keep that motivation going. But for me is that even if that motivation is gone, I still love that revision because because it's animating. It's that process of I can animate a ship, a creature, a human, a camera, or a combination of all of these. And just that is just great. I just at this point, I just love that. And when I did that little kid Jedi thing, I just loved everything. The moment I sat down, it was I worked on this in the mornings and evenings and, and uh, weekends actually as well. Every time I sat down, it was like this is this is just fun. I like doing all of it. And I still have to revisions for myself and my own clients, but it's just something that helps me going because the thing is you might have your idea of a shot and you're super motivated but motivation is not going to get you through that process neither is discipline but discipline is still better than motivation because motivation you need this to start it might be your initial spark like i'm going to do this but then you're going to lose that motivation somehow 
through some outside effect, notes or something. And the only way to continue is going to be through your work ethic and your discipline to continue. But that can still be a pain if you if you don't love it. And for me, it's that extra step. So after motivation and discipline, the love of it, the love of animating is what keeps me going. And I can do this over and over and over because I know it doesn't matter what the end result is. I'm at the end a better animator. So if you do love the aspect of animating a human or a creature or props or vehicles or the camera, everything, it just increases the chance that you will find something in this shot, which at this point you might hate, but there's always one thing then that you can hold on to. Like, I love animating this. It could be whatever, it was, there's a lot you can animate. And if you find that, you can hold on to that and that gets you through all those revisions. And if there's more to it, even better. But I'm just talking about those worst cases, again, not those edge cases that are horrible in the news that you may have faced. These are just the daily things because they're like the death of a thousand paper cuts if, in a way. It's you have those bigger moments, but you still have to daily grind and you might not feel it that day, but if this continues every day, week by week and months, and after a couple of years, it's just, it just, you burn out. And I don't know, so far, I still haven't had that burnout effect. It's just, there's just too much that I love about it. I might hate it next year. I don't know, who knows? But for now, it's just something that I not rediscovered, but it was a reminder when I did that personal clip, that, that little Jedi kid, where I just, I love going through A to Z. And now with renders, I really liked looking and learning, it was horrible, but you know, I am learning, but like looking at the lights and what's good lighting and just the render process and figuring out why do the render times take so long and just it's another thing that was super cool to learn that now I want to do a next clip and I'm going to use instead of Arnold it's going to be Redshift so I want to go through that same process with a different type of render but I'm already excited to go through the animation and setting everything up for that render and I want to go through like I said for cloth and effects I want to go through more aspects of animation for me it's like an outlook of if I start animating this and that is the end result going through this whole thing until that final render just sounds awesome to me and again that's very subjective i don't know i don't know what other people you know what your process is again i'm very curious what is the thing that has helped you to continue day by day weeks months and now years if you have animated for 10 years 15 years 20 years then again like if anybody who's who, <laughs> if anybody who's animated for 20 years is watching my channel i don't know why like these are none of the things that i talk about here will help you like you're the seasoned pro but just in case just in case you're a seasoned anime professional and you're watching this. I'm very curious. What is the thing that helps you? Maybe it's none of this and you just have your favorite music on all the time or some TV show on the side that gets you going. Like that helps me through like the polished process or like the, the less creative process. I have stuff going all the time. Music, TV shows, it's just something in the background. And it's usually stuff that I know that I like, some Star Trek movie, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Ghostbusters, like whatever, like my childhood stuff. But there's just something that can trick me into like, oh, I like this day, today's gonna be fun, despite the repetitive task of whatever your shot is. So, but anyway, let me know, I'm very curious. And again, this is very subjective. This is just something that's helped me. And it's just something that, unfortunately, I can't conjure up in someone through tutorials or a speech through a camera. It's just something, I don't know. I don't know if that's something you just, you have to love it. Or if there are certain aspects that will make you fall in love with, I don't know. Because I constantly watch movies, TV shows, animation. I look, I mean, through the Animation Minute, there's a bunch of demos you see online. There's always something I try to listen to lectures. To me, just I always try to learn and hear new aspects of the animation, different processes, like what people do and how they go about their their daily life or whatever it's like the animation podcast just listening to that there were so many great tips and stories and it was it was fun to listen to the characters the characters the, the people on the podcast they're fun to listen to they almost became characters and it's just it's another thing where i go this is just another cool aspect of animation that just makes me love it as a whole even more and that's all i can say so for me this has and again it's not like i have done a bunch of stuff or gone through like some really tough things in this industry I've been super lucky, but after almost, like it's almost 20 years of animating and almost 18 years of animating professionally, I've done a bunch of projects. Like on my, on my IMDb is probably like around 50 projects. So I've gone through a lot of different type of animation like requirements or clients have asked different like different types of shots or just going through the daily process or just dealing with people. This could be like politics and social stuff within, within the company. I, th I think 
I've gone through, I won't say enough. Again, that sounds like I've gone through enough, but I think for myself, I've gone, I've had enough highs and lows. It's, it's frame it that way, where I can say, okay, how did I go through this? Why am I still liking this so much? How have I not given up after all of this? And it always comes down to, I like animating. Like this is really the simple phrase, but I just, but I like everything from A to B. And not, I'm not always super motivated, of course not. But that summary, I guess, of my ramble clip right now is that that clip that I animated at home was again, a reminder of this is awesome and I love it. And it's something that will always drive me forward. So even if the client's not the best client in the world, whatever, the, the show, or even, I mean, I can't really say the team because the people that I am in that warrants, they're so great. Like there's really nothing I can talk about in terms of, it's like the, the, the people around it. But sometimes you go through stuff where they're almost my 18 years. I mean, I've met some arrogant animators and some animators that are not exactly my favorite. You will have some, you know, cons throughout your industry experience. And I think at the end of the day, you're going to spend a lot of time actually animating. Again, you have those edge cases that are, can be pain with production maybe i don't know but the majority of the time will be you spending english uh animating so you better like animating since that is the majority of the time you're going to be spending you know what i mean so yeah i don't know i'm gonna end this ramble curious what you think what is your way of moving forward I, I don't know i'm very curious what what your trick is in a way or or if you love it maybe what is the thing that made you fall in love with the animation or the, the whole process or just i don't know so yeah i know let me know i'm very curious after all those years i just wanted to to mention that and maybe like in the states we had the thanksgiving week so maybe that's the opportunity to say thank you i want to say thank you to everybody animation happy hour people who post stuff online obviously everybody at work who's inspired me and it's just i want to say thank you to all of these like all of those things all the people who post things they do lectures they have stuff on youtube like anybody that contributes to this to the, the animation industry is for me another like a power up in terms of motivation of that's cool that powers me up again this is all thanks to everything around me so Thanksgiving. So I say thank you to all of you, besides listening to this clip, which is now tremendously long. But everybody that contributes to this industry through their work, their lectures, their whatever they do, their interviews, like fellow YouTubers who do animation stuff, like anybody, this is all for me a massive inspiration and motivation. And I say thank you. So I guess I'll, I'll end this clip with thank you to everybody who has contributed from 20 years ago up until now. It never ends. The, the motivation never ends. It's great. So I say thank you so much. And then I say thank you who are watching and maybe listening for uh, doing all this and that's it so yeah i'll end it like that and uh, i'll see you next week maybe hopefully in another upload